Hey guys, it's Chambros and I'm back doing another pre-raid loot dungeon and rep guide, uh, this time for Assassination Rogues. Uh, since this is pre-raid, you aren't ever really meant to be full bis. Almost all of your items can be upgraded in the already available raids of Nax, uh, City of Sanctum, and Eye of Eternity. Uh, these items are meant to be used in that period of time before you enter the raids for the first time, and in between lockouts for slots that I haven't been able to upgrade yet to maximize your damage in the meantime. Uh, the format is shown here and done per slot. Uh, if applicable, there's kind of Abyss 1A and 1B, then also a good to decent option, which is behind those two, and then a hit option if you need more hit and the previous options don't have any. I've also sorted through all these items and where they come from and listed on the right side here. Uh, this way you'll have a good idea of which heroic or reputation you should be focusing on, and I'll be doing a bit of a priority focus recap at the end. Now, before we get started, you'll want to know your caps for hit rating and expertise. Taking all 5 points in your precision talent gives 5% hit, and the first soft cap is for your special attacks, which is only 8%. Uh, you'll hit this without even trying. Uh, the second one is the spell hit cap, which is needed for your poisons, which is 17%. As long as you have a moonkin or a shadow priest, that cap is 237 hit rating. If you're alliance and have a drain eye in your party, then it's 210. After that level, hit rating usefulness is diminished, but still not useless as your hard cap, which covers the white damage from dual wielding, is 27%. Expertise is simple, it's 214 rating. There are no expertise talents or racial traits that affect daggers for assassination rogues. Alright, so I like both of these helms, but for different reasons. I'd say Master of the Watcher from the Oculus is stronger overall due to the value of the expertise, which it sure has a lot of, but if you're about to be overcapping expertise, this is a good place to dump it if you're an engineer because these bind on pickup goggles are still pretty close. And if you're not an engineer, I'd find another slot to drop the expertise. The Emblem Neck, Pendant of the Outcast Hero, is bought for 25 emblems and is your best pre-raid option. I would call the Neck a good second emblem buy if you don't want to wait or would rather spend the emblems on something else. The Jewel Crafting BOE Neck is a good second option with this gem socket. Uh, if you don't want to pay emblems or gold, then the Necklace of Arcane Spheres drops in Violet Hold. It's just the worst version of the Emblem one. In my opinion, Alders of the Careless Thief are the best overall item for shoulders in a pre-raid set. However, if you're hit heavy and could use the expertise, or would simply rather just buy the slot, then the Troll Woven Spalders are an extra excellent option. Uh, the Sprinting Shoulder Pads from Ankahet are still good if you want an expertise option that you don't have to spend gold on. I unexpectedly had a pretty hard time picking a best cloak. Uh, Shroud of Reverberation and Embrace of Sorrow are both good options. Shroud if you need the expertise, and Embrace if you need the hit. Uh, note that Embrace is actually from the normal version of Halls of Stone, so you may have to go a bit out of your way to acquire this cloak. Uh, Ice Striker's cloak is BOE and good for an Auction House spec rogue, especially if you're already around your expertise and hit caps. Uh, the best overall chess piece pre-raid is the Emblem, eye level 200 tier piece, but I wouldn't recommend rushing 80 emblems for it. Uh, other buys are cheaper and more efficient. Uh, reason being that the Custodian's chess piece from Azul Narub and its lack of stamina and a stat budget is comparatively very good and is only not recommended if it's pushing you past your expertise cap. Uh, the Crystal Infused Tunic from the Nexus is a not terrible option if you could use the hit. The Wormrest Accord Exalted Bracers are 100% the best overall based on stats alone, but I would actually not recommend them at all if you have the possibility of obtaining Sunwell gear before the release of Wrath. Uh, the Slayer's Bracers are a Sunwell tier 6 and have worse stats, but when paired with another piece, uh, preferably the Boots, it will give you the 2 piece bonus for an extra 5% haste. This is better than any loss of stat from the items. If you don't have access to Sunwell gear and haven't yet hit Exalted, then the Leather Galt Gloves from Halls of Lightning are still good. If you could use the hit or are just lazy and like to buy lots of things at the Auction House, then the BOE Drake Champions Bracers that drop in the Oculus are solid. For the hand slot, the Emblem Tier piece is your best piece, but it's actually really close. Uh, the Gilt Edge Leather Gauntlets from Utlegard Pinnacle have 66 hit, hit rating on them, and if you can actually make use of all of it, then it can save you the 60 emblems you'd otherwise spend on the gauntlets for a bit while you spend your emblems elsewhere. Uh, lots of good belt options for Assassination Rogues. All expertise except for one BOE hit option that drops in Astral Narub. Uh, the best belt is Drorak's Crocolis Skin Belt, and that costs 40 emblems. Highly recommend this item and spending some of your emblems here. Uh, Troll Woven Girdle is another solid option if you can use and buy it on the Auction House. Uh, the Sharp Barbed Leather Belt from Utgard Keep is your best non-emblem, non-gold option. Uh, the Gord Hide Leg Guards are a fantastic piece and is one of two great reasons to continually run in Gundrak. Uh, until you're able to get these, the Mind Expanding Leggings from Kieran Tor Revert are a good option if you can fit the 62 Expertise rating into your set. 
Uh, the boots are the second of the two preferred slots for your tier 6 pieces and getting that sweet 5% haste. Uh, you'll need access to Sunwell gear though, and if you don't, then hands down the best boots are the boots of the Neverending Path from Argent Crusade Exalted. They have a ton of hit on them, uh, 66 rating, so make sure you'll be able to fit that in. Uh, there's another okay option in Halls of Stone, still with hit rating, just less than the rep boots. Hemorrhaging Circle is the second great reason to keep running Gundrak. This is your overall, best overall, pre-raid ring, and will be a very in-demand item in your dungeon groups. Uh, your second best is the Kirin Tor ring, which requires Exalted and costs a whole bunch of gold. Uh, I've also listed two jewel crafted rings here. They can be bought on the auction house, but I really love the ring of Scarlet Shadow Shadows as a hit option. It's very cheap for what you get out of it. Uh, a second hit option would be the Mobius Band from Calling a Strat, which is almost as good. I almost didn't list the Titanium Impact Band here, as there is a better alternative, but definitely not an easily accessible one. Uh, the Signet of Edward the Odd is an epic BOE world drop, aka something you can't really farm for and will cost a ton of gold. There are two clear-cut best options for trinkets. A Greatness card, which can be very in demand and very expensive, and the Mirror of Truth, which you can buy with 40 emblems and is a great first buy. Uh, there are also a whole lot of very underwhelming trinket options for rogues. Uh, your best bet, if you can utilize the hit rating on it, is the Sphere of Red Dragon's Blood from the Nexus. If you're a jewel crafter or alchemist, then the buy now pickup trinkets from those professions are also a good option. All three of these ranged weapon options are good for assassination rogues, but only one is a boss drop in five mans, uh, the Drake Mounted Crossbow, and it's the one I probably like the least. I like the Nezingwary 4000, Engineering Crafted, better for rogues. Uh, the one I actually like the most is the hit option, the Spine Slicer. It's buy down equip, so it's buyable, but it's also farmable, technically. It comes from pickpocketing Northrend humanoids. It may take you a long time, or not. Uh, hey, maybe you'll get lucky. The weapon slot for Assassination Rogues has been a pretty controversial one. Uh, common knowledge on private servers has had double librarian paper cutters. It's the best weapons for quite some time. Uh, they're bind down equip, drop in halls of lightning, and are not particularly difficult to get. Uh, nothing is stopping you from using two. In fact, I'd encourage you to try it out. Uh, you're definitely going to want at least one. Uh, more modern calculations have a flesh shaper which drops in halls of stone, paired with a paper cutter as your theoretical pre-raid bis. Uh, Namlax is very close to being just as good, but is a BOE world drop and therefore likely to be quite pricey. Uh, shout out to the broken stalactite from Senza Hodier Revered as a close third. And that wraps up all the gear slots. Uh, for a quick and dirty priority list, Assassination Rogues don't really need a whole lot of reputation gear, so I'd take Knights of the Ebon Blade to Revered first for the Helm Enchant, then Kieran Tor to Exalted for the Ring and the Pants at Revered if you still need them. If at all possible, get in the Sunwell Plateau if you haven't already, and get two piece tier 6 from the Bracers and Boots for 5% haste. The absolute first gearing choice you make at 80 should be acquiring a Librarian's Paper Cutter either by running Halls of Lightning or buying it from the Auction House. Uh, speaking of the Auction House, Rogues have tons of bind down equip options, so if you're swimming in gold, then going AH spec is a very real alternative. Uh, Gundrak probably has the highest quality item drops from all the dungeons, or the pants and the ring. I'd run that one daily until I get both. And finally, the Mirror of Truth trinket should be your first emblem purchase. After that, you go a few different ways depending on what is the biggest upgrade. Likely the neck, likely the neck, since it only costs 25 emblems. That's it. If you have any questions, drop them below in the comments, or come by on Twitch, link below in the description, to catch me live. If you like this sort of content and want to help support this channel, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.